It's on. Thank you very much. Um, I want to first of all thank Linda and Maddie and all you folks who have invited us here today. Um, this means a lot for us to. To uh, so, oh, there we go. So, sorry. Um, this means a lot to to us to get out and tell you what we feel and what we intend to do. Um, first of all, I want to pay tribute to the Ukrainian people. Um, not very long ago, we were somewhat facing the same issues on January 6th. Um, and, and it's something we all need to take seriously. I took it very seriously. I'm an immigrant, I'm a proud immigrant who's moved to this country since 1974. And I've valued every, <laughs> everything this state had to offer and this country has uh, had offered me and my family. Um, I grew up in a country called Guyana in South America. Um, I'm one of 17 children. Grew up on a farm. Um, so all you farmers out there, thank you for putting food on the table. Um, I know what it's like. It's hard work. It's not easy. It doesn't pay much. All right? So thank you very much. Um, came to this country in 1974. Um, I recognized that, and I hate to say this, farming wasn't for me. Um, even though it was hard work and it was, it was good work, it wasn't for me. I thought I could do things a little differently. And with the encouragement of my, of my parents, um, we moved to the United States. And I took up interest in science, in the science field. With that, I geared my education towards the sciences. Um, and I'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, I went to high school in Des Moines, Iowa. Then I, went, I graduated from Drake University uh, with a bachelor's degree, first generation graduation from college. And I'm real proud of that as well. Um, and again, without the United States, I would never have been given that opportunity. So with a bachelor's degree, I moved on to um, further my education, professional studies. And after I received my second degree, I decided, well, it's time to find a job. So went out, and I, I basically did everything that I didn't want to do, which was a good thing. Um, for all you union members out there, I belong to three unions, all right? And, and a shout out to you, you have my support 100% of the, of the way, 100% of the time. Um, so I, with, with labor work, mechanical work, assembly work, I, um, I finally got my opportunity when I applied for a job at NASA. Um, I started working for NASA back in 1998 as an associate scientist. Um, so after 25 years and what has been happening in our country, I have decided that I could do better somewhere else. After the pandemic, um, you know, 50% of the people didn't believe in science, which is really aggravating to us scientists. It, it just kind of made me wonder, what are we doing? Well, I, I realized quickly that it wasn't that we were doing anything wrong. It was the other side that was doing things a little differently than we anticipated. Um, when, you, when you call a pandemic a hoax, that's a bunch of baloney. It's not a hoax when a, almost a million people have died in this country, all right? It is something, and, and for those of you wearing, still wearing masks, go right ahead. It's, it's, you know, we're not gonna question anything that you have about masks because we support it all the way. We support vaccines 100% of the time. You know, what, what's interesting is um, our childhood vaccination, everyone runs to the doctors, and we make sure that everybody has their vaccine as kids. And why? It's to prevent these things from happening. Then suddenly, nobody believes in it. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. 50% of the population doesn't believe in, in, in the vaccine because of politics. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, we see so many people resigning or retiring from, from the medical field now. I have four daughters. All right? All four of them have worked diligently in saving lives during this pandemic. They spent, you know, Hours and hours, and again, shout out to nurses and, and people in the medical profession. Um, you, they've done a wonderful job in, in promoting uh, what we do in the science field. 
And, and, and I appreciate it, and I think most people appreciate that. Again, it's that other side that doesn't appreciate it uh, because of one guy. Um, so anyways, I, I, I decided that um, I'm going to enter into the political world. I'm a little late, a um, little late starting, so most of you don't know me. And I, I hope you get to know me because I, I have some ambitious goal if I should be elected as your senator to represent the state. I look around the room. Um, social security, since Paul Ryan, okay? It, it's, and I'm not saying you're old. I, I'm right there with you also, okay? Um, it's, it's, look, we, if you want to see the senior population jump into poverty, get rid, of, get rid of social security. And we will really have a problem in this country. You know? So it is something that, that um, the Republican has been stealing from us. It is not an entitlement. We all paid into that system and we deserve a return back on it. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, we spend in this country, we spend some years from $600 billion to $800 billion in defense of our country. And on January 6th, we couldn't even defend the Capitol. Okay? That is sad. So, my goal is to reestablish the social security system in this country. I will take every year $100 billion from the defense budget and put it right back into the social security system that they have stolen from. Okay? And not only that, we will provide better health care. You know, when we, when we speak of health care in this country, we speak of the physical health. Folks, we have to start talking about mental health also. It is one that depends on the other. Healthcare, the physical health depends on the medical health. Or, sorry, on, yeah, on your medical health. And the medical aspect of it depends on your physical health. You keep both healthy and we'll have, you know, we'll have a good system. Um, the second thing I, I'd like to work on, if I should get to Congress, would be, you know, we still have almost a million used to be kids who are now adults, the DACA kids, most of us know them by, who deserve citizenship in this country, okay? They deserve that. I'll, I'll, I'll go back and, um, you know, Ronald Reagan was the first one that granted amnesty to almost, what, three million immigrants in this country? We can't grant a million kids their, their rights to be here. They didn't come here on their own accords. They were brought here, and they deserve to be American citizens and, and support our system as well. And we need to get that straightened out also. Okay. The, the other thing I would like to look at is what's going on in our state. Oh, by the way, I'm sure most of you watch Kim Reynolds. Not that you will admit it, but I admit it. I watched her, all right? And, and you know, I'll tell you right now, all right, we are fifth in the nation, fifth in the nation where we are paying the most income tax in this country. We are behind California, Washington, New York, New Jersey, and Minnesota. We pay almost 8.5%. So watching her um, give her speech the other day, she's taking a victory lap for lowering the taxes in the state, the income tax rates in the state to 4.3%. Well, excuse me, who's been running the state for years? How did it get that way? Okay, it wasn't the Democrats that put it there. So you can't go around taking a victory lap for something you've been doing for years and then turn around and go, look at me, look what I did. Okay, all right. I want to correct um, voting rights in this country. Okay? It, it's a simple process. All right? And here's my solution to it. And I'll go real fast, sorry. Uh, just make it a part of the driver license system. Okay? When you turn 18, you're registered, you get your driver's license. You can register to vote. You don't have to register to a party, but you're an eligible voter. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so these are the things, if, if I should get the chance to represent the state, uh, these are the things, some of the things I will be fighting for. Um, so I, I 
hope you take a close look. I have some papers around. And the other thing, I'm also in jeopardy of not making the ballot. Uh, my deadline is Friday. And we have 19 counties we need 100 signatures from. And I'm behind by about 12 counties, by about some maybe eight signatures, some maybe 20. So if there are anybody who would like to volunteer help me out in the next week, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. And um, I hope wish us all luck.